New, 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 new. Okay, we have um, some new stuff, and then we have kind of start the show. Let's kick it off right away. Okay, first up, it's a very, this is a really high res photo. This is a very, very, very tiny um, camera. So maybe go forward two. Yeah, so that's next to a quarter. It's tiny. This is like um, you know an inch by maybe like a quarter of an inch. It's a very, very small 640 by 480 USB camera, and it would be really useful for embedded projects, especially ones where you have, say, Linux or a computer where you've got, you know, USB that can read um, a video camera and you want a very, very small display. Also, some people uh, sometimes make projects that have, um, they're tethered to a computer, um, but you don't want the camera to be visible. You don't want like, a gigantic webcam. You want something like a pinhole camera. So this is it. It's like the smallest camera I could find. It's got a one millimeter um, connector and we have a USB to the connector cable that cables just a pass through. So if you want, you know, say you have like a Raspberry Pi computer or, you know, a smaller um, embedded lens computer, you can actually wire it directly for a very small color camera interface. Um, you're not going to get super great quality, but, you know, definitely for some machine vision stuff, reading QR codes, uh, taking quick snapshots. Um, time lapses, environmental monitoring. Um, this is very small and very inexpensive. Uh, and because it doesn't come in an enclosure, it's easy to pot it or put it behind glass or what have you. So I think good for image and video products. Don't forget, you need something with USB host to connect to it. It will not work with a microcontroller. Next up. Next up, we've got some ratchets. Um, you know, we were talking about getting into small spaces and I thought I carry some right angle ratchet tools that would be really handy. So this is the first one. It's a bigger ratchet. It's a little bit less expensive. It comes with a whole mess load of bits. So yeah, we have the 33 bit version and I'll show the ratcheting action on the overhead. So it comes with bits and extender. Go the overhead. Okay. Um, it comes with bits and an extender. So let me remove this protector. Oh, goodness. So there's uh, star, hex, and oops, this is star, this is hex, uh, star, allen, or hex, um, various uh, sizes of Phillips and various sizes of uh, flathead, and also, of course, square. You know, once in a while you end up with square. And then um, this has, you know, about an inch, inch and a quarter of clearance. Um, the ratchet you can set by pressing this. And so you can either, you know, you can either uh, do loosening or if you flip it, you can rotate it this way. So this is good for getting into really small spots, um, but with, um, you know, various adjustable um, uh, bits, depending on what you want to, to ratchet in. But let's say you're like, man, you know, that's that's a really nice tight fit right angle ratchet. What if I want something smaller and even thinner? Well, we've got that. The thinnest and most right angleist ratchet is the next thing. All right. This one, um, and Phil, you might remember we we first saw this when we went to Tokyo Hands, yeah. and I saw this ratchet kit and I and I picked one up. And since then I was like, you know, I've never been able to find it in the US. Um, and so I remembered that when I remembered it when we were looking for uh, some right angle ratchets and I actually found um, an importer that would let me buy this. So this is a, it doesn't have as many bits. It only has, you know, eight bits, but of course you can get other ones, but it is ridiculously thin. So wow. this is less than an inch. I think it's like 0.6 inches. So half the depth of this one. Okay. It does not get much thinner than this. Um, it's extremely um, well designed and well made. It's got uh, also ratcheting action, um, but very elegant. It's like actually kind of hard to to test this because it's because it's so skinny. It's hard to grab onto something. Um, it will get into like any corner you need for sure. And it's um, designed and and I believe also made in in Japan by a Japanese company. That's why we originally saw it in Tokyo. Um, but a really really nice miniature ratchet and also of course um very um small and lightweight so if you need to you know have a very tiny wrench kit that goes into your toolkit um i initially actually after we got the one i had from tokyo hands which i still have downstairs it's in my bike toolkit i was using it to um 
do uh, uh, bike adjustments because it was so small I could put it in my little um, carrier bag attached to my bike frame. But uh, not only good for bikes, good for anything. Um, and of course, comes with a variety of bits. This one comes with a couple of uh, hex bits as well as two flat head and PH1, PH2, and PH3 Phillips head. Okay. Um, and then the story of the show tonight, besides Yuli Data, our team, our customers, our community is quad rotary. So much rotary. It's the code because it's so quadraphonic. Um, if you like rotary encoders and you want to connect a lot of them to your project, you'll quickly run out of timers or uh, interrupt pins. Um, how to do it? You could use one of these quad rotary encoder um, breakout boards that we've designed. We have uh, ones that have been with um, one rotary encoder, but this one has four. Um, that comes as a, a blank PCB, so you you decide what encoders you want to solder in. There's also NeoPixels underneath. Um, I'll show an example of that if you have clear shafted encoders, which are not that common, but if you do happen to have them, the NeoPixels will shine out the top, which is super neat. Um, and then the rotary encoders are read by an onboard AT Tiny microcontroller and then converted to I squared C that you can query. So you connect it up to your microcontroller, microcomputer, you know, Raspberry Pi is great because it can't even read encoders at all. Um, it doesn't have the real time um, GPIO control. Or you can connect it to your uh, Pico or CircuitPython or MicroPy, whatever, and read the four encoders and control the NeoPixels. So I'll just show the demo on um this overhead real fast so hold on let me reset it uh -oh. there's nothing worse than uh -oh. there you go. live demo um okay so you've got uh rotary encoders and then of course um these are just metal ones um, that i've soldered in i don't have the knobs on but imagine there's knobs also you know by the way you don't have to have them soldered in directly here if you have large rotary encoders like we showed the really big like 60 millimeter encoders you can just solder the three wires to here and then use this as an encoder reader it does not have to be you know these standard PEC 11 footprint encoders um, although if you do want to use them they're ready to go and this is the four by one inch uh, footprint which matches with our other um, long stem QT boards and then again if you happen to have and I have like one sample here of a um, encoder that has a clear shaft we don't stock these yet, but hopefully soon I'll, I'll be able to get some. Um, then the NeoPixel uh, shines through and you can use a translucent knob um, to have the uh, the color nice. uh, come through. So this is like, you know, green. I mean, it's incredibly bright. But That's nice. You can, you can see. It's not actually as bright in person. It's just like collimated out the end. Yeah. Uh, so you have nice uh, pink knobs. So this is, um, you know, an easy, easy way to add a ton of encoders. There's also... On the bottom of the board, uh, three address jumpers you can cut. So you can connect up to eight of these at the same time and get um, just like a ridiculous number of encoders. And there's also an interrupt pin, which you can have toggle when um, either the uh, button is pressed. So you, you know, press the button and here it, it's detecting the um, encoder switch or when the encoder is rotated, and that way you're not spamming the I squared C ask it constantly, hey, has something changed, has something changed? You can do that, of course, but if you want to save I squared C and get uh, better performance, um, you listen to the interrupt pin and it'll tell you, but then you know you have to wire one more pin up to your um, quad encoder breakout. So uh, all the encoders, encoder away. Uh, we've got code for Arduino and CircuitPython for this board, so it's, uh, it's ready to rock. Just don't forget, you need to pick up four encoders to go with it. Okay, and that is new products this week. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Rotate, rotate, rotate. New, 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 new. Rotate, rotate, rotate. New, 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 new.